silence me. I just want, it's not that all lives don't matter, but right now, our lives matter. Black, black lives, matter. lives matter. Yes. Black trans lives matter. Yes. Trans lives matter. Yes. Because guess what? We all minorities, but right now, like, let's focus on the person who got killed. Tony McDay was a black trans man. Okay? Amen. We're not doing this. We're doing this for him. We're doing this for our brothers and our sisters who got shot, but we're doing this for every black person. Because at the end of the day, I cannot take my fucking skin color off. Mm -mm. I cannot mask this shit, okay? Everywhere I fucking go, I'm profiled whether I like it or not. That ain't right. Like, I'm looked at whether I like it or not. That ain't right. Being, first of all, I want white people to realize their fucking privilege. Yes, no one can look at you and tell anything about you unless you give them that information. Wherever the fuck I go, I'm profiled. Look at my fucking hair. Look at my skin, bruh. We love it. This shit, I can't take this shit off. So guess what? I'm going to die about it. Yes. I'm going to die about my fucking skin. You cannot take my fucking blackness away from me. My blackness is not for your fucking consumption, nigga. It's not. It's not. Okay? It's not. And y'all need to listen. It's Like I said, it's okay to be angry. Use wisdom. Don't move stupidly and get yourself hurt. You already seen, we all in this together. I, I didn't mean to like divide anybody, we all in this together. My brother who got, um, he got ran over, y'all need to know who the fucking enemy is. I, I, sometimes I get mad, but I'm not trying to divide nobody. Y'all need to remember who the fucking enemy is. It's right. racist Tallahassee, white racist Tallahassee. Say it again, say it. Cause those are the niggas that ran our fucking brother over. So y'all need to keep that in mind. The same, the same energy that we had when we were walking the fucking streets, keep that with you at all fucking times. Don't let nobody take away your blackness from you. Your blackness is not supposed to be subdued at all. It's not. on here real quick to say thank you for the love and support y'all have shown on my sexual assault part one video this is obviously a continuation from that video because the video was way too long so i had to cut it into two separate videos i hope you guys enjoyed the first one and um yeah here's part two and i will see you guys on my next video all right guys so we're gonna move on to the next part of our discussion which is um it was also a trend that was going on on twitter for uh a few weeks it was called dmv rapist so basically someone just made a page about rapists or um they were out and out rapists or people who had had like negative interactions with girls so people would dm girls would dm the page and let them know like oh so this is the person you know did this to me whatever situation they explained the situation and they would have a picture of the person's ad and they would tag the person and it was just like it was very scary and very eye-opening to see that this was going on in our society um, in our community um because like we knew some of these people or we knew of these people and it was really crazy and scary like because we've been around these people or we've interacted with this person and it's just like for them to be on that page is kind of really scary so um what did you think about the page yeah i think that um i mean i knew that because me i'm originally from chicago so mm -hmm. i just moved to dmv about a, almost a year ago like august 2019 and so um i mean obviously there's like predators and there's like abusers and everywhere mm -hmm. like this page like i i just moved here but it was kind of alarming the amount of people I even knew that was on there and yeah. I don't even know that many people yeah so it was it was um, strange because I was in group chats with some of them mm -hmm. and, like, I literally had to remove myself even removed some of them right. out before I left the chat <laughs> so it's just like yeah it was a lot of 
people and like even I have friends from back home in Chicago like texting me and like hey be careful like you know so many people had sent me the page the DMV page and it was just like oh I saw this that and the third like it's a lot of African men which is yeah, like it's even more sad <sighs> it's ridiculous but I'm not so. surprised if we'll yeah. be honest I'm not because I feel like at a very young age I feel like even just Africans they don't know what consent means or even like per personal space like they don't mm -hmm. understand what it is so at the same point I'm not excusing that because I feel like we all were lucky mm -hmm. to have you know that higher education that some of our parents did not have so you should know what consent means you learned that in school if you mm -hmm. didn't Google is free you know what it <laughs> means so it's just like for you guys to be able to put yourself in that situation is kind of sad and it's just like there was no point like there was like you literally just ruined your life for nothing exactly. because of what and it's just like you could have simply just ask somebody is this okay with you and yeah and it's just like i just want a lot of parents to from a very young age to start teaching boys what consent means what no means and if that if we're able to do that for like um our generation as um we grew up to be parents who have like you know just better success able yeah. to talk to kids especially boys because everything everything starts with boys and um and it's just like yeah once you teach your son how what consent is you know boys are able to understand like you know when i touch a girl and she says no like it's okay like yeah. it's okay for me to ruin myself in that situation for it yeah. to lead into something else yeah. so i feel like that's something that needs to be installed at a very young age and then also with girls i feel like we need to stop victim blame victim blaming girls and letting them know like it's not their fault mm -hmm. how you're dressed is not your fault you could be lying naked on the road it's still your body so no one has the right to come to you and touch your body without your consent. I don't care if you're running around naked, everything's I don't care. It's still your body and you have a right to say yes or no. So like I feel like if we're able to educate people or sorry, educate kids, um, because I feel like, you know, your most fun fundamental learning starts when you're a child. Mm -hmm. If we're able to do that, um, in our community, that would um, you know, reduce the situation and it's just like and if people like I remember like people when that page came out they were like thinking about a scenario it was like oh maybe this could have happened to my thought and it's just like you sh that shouldn't even be a thought in your mind so, because yeah if you really truly understand what the meaning of consent means you wouldn't have ever even had to think like oh but that was I in this situation mm -hmm. with somebody so I don't feel like they don't really know what it means like the true yeah. understanding of consent that's why like a lot of guys who were on their belief they were innocent but it's just like simply like holding someone's hand without yeah. like letting that's <laughs> that's assault because yeah. you're in someone's space you're assaulting in their personal bubble yeah that's just simply assault so it's yeah. just like it's always just better to be safe than sorry always ask before you touch people or before you get to their personal space and um do you have anything else to say on that? yeah i think that's really important because a lot of times to um people um i think it's something with like what am i trying to say like control they like to you know, feel like they own somebody yeah. and it's like i saw something on social media that said like it's five minutes for you and a lifetime for her mm -hmm. and it's like i don't think people recognize like the the mental damage that it does too because you might think oh you're just trying to you know get you know your whatever off or yeah. you're, you know you just want to just for you to feel good in that yeah, moment yeah. but it's just like you have to realize these things aren't like it's not an easy thing to navigate through and mm -hmm. especially um in a world that is constantly like invalidating you like yeah. i don't think people are ever on the side of the victim it's very yeah. hard to see that mm -hmm. i mean i think now they're you now slowly yeah getting slowly it. getting it yeah mm -hmm. now like i'm seeing people backing up you know yeah. even now every now and then you'll see questionable stuff you yeah. always people will always say stupid ish yeah. so it's just like um but i think that it's just being cautious and like just getting the practice of like teaching the boys because i hate when they're like oh um teach your girls or you know or you know yeah. i get people saying like oh you know i want to get a gun i want to get this let me get a pocket knife but like why should we have to do that why don't you just teach people to keep their hands to themselves you know yeah. so it's it's um very tough yeah situation. and like i remember like 
some of the guys I knew were like, oh, I didn't know this happened when that trend was going mm -hmm. on on Twitter. And they were like, oh, I didn't know this happened to so many women. And it's just like, just imagine the women that have it yeah. came out and tweeted that. So it's just like, you guys need to, first of all, take your friends as, um, take, to, sorry, take them into accountability. Yeah. Cause because, because you know, we're not even gonna get to that because all you rapist apologists that's <laughs> all here watching, your friend is a rapist and you need to check your friend. Yes, sir. But um, yeah, just take them into account and believe for what they did. I don't care if, no matter how small or big it is. If a girl said he did something, he did it, mm -hmm. and he needs to take account and believe for that and you know apologize. I don't know. I, I don't know if even an apology is gonna fix it at this right. point. But just own up, own up to, to it. it. Yeah. Exactly. Own up to it and like. Your little friends that be coming to us, some oh, you know, you know, there's some people just out, the, out here to get them mm -hmm. and like here to ruin no your life. No one wants to get you, no one You think someone generally wants that kind of like, you like, know, you know, pressure negative pressure attention on them. I'm like, yeah, or well, when people are like, oh, you just want clout. Who wants clout from, from that? Like, <laughs> that's, that's so it's, bad. It's, it's actually it's just crazy because, like, it's not funny, but some of the things that y'all be saying really is questionable. Yeah, y'all because... looking like clowns <laughs> because it's just like. What? It's talk about just... their all together. Okay, you're not even that important. So let's start there. Like they're praying for their downfall. For, that's their favorite one. You're praying for downfall. Everybody think about your man's like that, please. Mm -mm. They but yeah, so that's... like we need to teach everybody what consent is, even what like women too, like because mm -hmm. there are women rapists out there, but it's not as common as you know a man yeah. raping a woman. But it's just like. Everyone just needs to know what consent means, like, because, you know, everyone is, like, people aren't, because I know, like, me personally, like, I'm a very touchy-feely person, mm -hmm. and, like, even this, I'll be like this with people, <laughs> and, like, I had to, like, kind of pull myself back, because mm -hmm. I know not everyone is cool with that or mm -hmm. comfortable with that, yeah. or, like, so it's just, like, I had to check myself sometimes, because, like, me doing that, you might not like, even though yeah. cool, but mm -hmm. it's just, like, just little stuff like that, you just have to check yourself upon, yeah. and I feel like you could definitely, like, you know, save yourself from being in a situation you don't want to be. Yeah. And just yeah. end up on a rapist page, oh, even like, sorry. even though you didn't like rape, you still sexually assaulted someone, and that's still, you know, yeah, yeah. It's wrong. So now we're going to move on to um, the hypersexuality after. Um, that's it, right? Yeah, it, like yeah, sexuality or hypersexualization. I think they both have this hard. It's the same. <laughs> like, but like, you know, the aftermath of going through something. Yeah. Like how do people handle it? What yeah. do they do? Mm -hmm. Um, like everyone handles it differently. Everyone is different. Yeah. You know, because I feel like sometimes so you like talk about your experience, like how you were after. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. sure, yeah. So basically like because I know I've seen a lot too from even some of the stories where they would discuss like you know how they kept going back to the same person mm -hmm. or they kept having sex with the same person or like they just oh, couldn't. Okay. Hold on a second. Guys, I'm gonna put a screenshot here to let you guys get the definition of what Stockholm Syndrome is. It's basically like it's when like let's say for example Angela was kidnapped and she's been beaten, raped, whatever, she's been through this trauma and like it was happening for so long that I don't know, one day she got a chance to es escape. But you know, from the fear and trauma she's been through, she's scared that if she was able to escape, the um, the abuser was gonna, I don't know, capture her. So she, it's her to run away and try to escape. She stays and you know, she becomes accustomed to the abuser. Like she kind of like, as accepted, like, you know, this is mm -hmm. my life now. There's no point of me running away. This is, yeah. what, like, it's kind of trauma. It's like, it's your mind trying to, like, you know, kind of block you from trauma. Mm -hmm. So you kind of stay with your abuser because you're like, you know, this is the only person you've interacted with for God knows how long. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of become, like, accustomed to the pain and to the abuse. So you don't even try to escape or try to set free because the times you've actually tried, mm -hmm. he had actually beat you or stopped you or whatever. So that's, like, an example of what Stockholm Syndrome is. But I don't have the actual definition of what it is yeah. so um yeah, you but yeah like a lot of survivors they experience that and i i see a lot of people shaming them like mm -hmm. oh like well, you have a choice but it's just not it's as not. easy as you yeah. think it is you know yeah. same thing as when people um go through something like that when they're raped or sexually assaulted and they turn to like some people either shut down where mm -hmm. they don't want anyone to touch them or yeah. close to them or yeah. some people like they have 
a lot of like sex and like with different people mm -hmm. and i think i had mentioned this on my twitter the other day where i was like it's just like the result when people um go through um like yeah when they go through something like that and they start having sex with different people um i feel like it's a way of coping right exactly mm -hmm. it's a way of coping and then you it's kind of like you trying to take control of the situation mm -hmm. like take your body back because mm -hmm. you were in a situation where you um felt like something was taken away from mm -hmm. you and so having consensual sex sometimes it, it makes you feel like you'll think that okay that's a lot better like i can do whatever i'm i'm in control so i can mm -hmm. do whatever i want mm -hmm. and i definitely went through that too i think i actually went through that last summer um it was very severe it was very wild severe. um it was really wild like it shouldn't even tell you like ah, i was so oh, shook yeah. after the end of my little like tour <laughs> that tour <laughs> girl i was making it right i was end of it i'm like i just didn't it didn't make me feel good about myself mm -hmm. but at the time i was like you know what i can't i can do this because i can i'm gonna mm -hmm. do it because i want to type mm -hmm. of like attitude you know mm -hmm. and so it's just a, a form of coping and mm -hmm. like i had to like besides that like trying to cope and get through certain things like this like besides um just having a lot of sex with different people you know there are other like unhealthy coping mechanisms mm -hmm. that i had dived into that i had to literally like pull myself out of you know yeah. so these things really do like long-term damages and i yeah. really need people to recognize that right. because it's not like we're not having fun this is not something that's like oh let me just do this like yeah. wake up the next day it's a new day no this stays with people for life right. some people don't even survive exactly. it, you know yeah. um some people end up like committing suicide just because the pain is like literally too much for them mm -hmm. and some people actually succeed and it's just really sad that you know they have like to go through all that pain and just to end their lives like that like and then you just it's just a lot it affects mm -hmm. so many aspects of your life it'll start affecting because you don't know how to deal with your pain or you're uncomfortable with your pain it'll start mm -hmm. affecting your relationships your mm -hmm. friendships mm -hmm. and like because for me like last year was horrible for me like i know like i've i've tried to uh take my own life because the pain was just too much mm -hmm. i felt like i was always suffocating you know mm -hmm. and i think the first time i did that was about i was like 12 years old and then I tried again like a week before my college graduation um, last year and like I've lost a lot of friends in the process of trying to get through this you know mm -hmm. but I've also met some great amazing people like you mm -hmm. so <laughs> so it's just like it's a lot of you go through a lot but just um, something I always 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 try to push is to just be intentional about your healing process yeah. and just <clears> like understand that it's not your fault and um, you will get through it mm -hmm. it's not what defines you it's like the person that comes out of the situation yeah. um, you're gonna come out even better stronger and mm -hmm. um, it's not making an excuse for what happened because mm -hmm. what happened was shitty mm -hmm. nobody deserves to go through that you know so it's um, you have different coping mechanisms and I know like when I was going through my coping mechanism I was always hard on myself like I felt like this person this horrible person or this person that didn't deserve much and like you know mm -hmm. like I felt like really shitty so I think that also being easy don't be too hard on yourself because like it's not an easy thing to go through, yeah. through or like to process you yeah. know yeah so I feel like for me it was the opposite like for the longest time like I hated men <laughs> I hated men so much and because like I also didn't have any like positive role models in my life because my dad my siblings were my two brothers were here so like we didn't really have that relationship either you know after all that stuff happened to me I just like really hated guys because I'm just like like wow like there are people who are out there that do things like this yeah. and like I didn't want anybody to touch me like I was so firm on like you know waiting to marriage till I had sex and stuff like that like I wanted to do something that mattered and like someone I cared about and stuff like that and I just felt like I don't know like I felt like I just feel so bad for people who didn't have the choice to like you know, like how I said, like, no, I want to wait to marriage and Same. like have sex. And just like that, the fact that that choice was taken away from them, it's just, it's just really sad to me because, like, you know, I had, I had thank God for you being able to give me that choice. And just like, I know that wasn't your story. And it's just like, I know it wasn't a lot of people's stories. And it just really sucks that, you know, 
people didn't have that and that was taken away from them at a very young age and just like that's what also made me like was so stern about believe like you know I went away I went away from someone I care about or someone I'm in love with and like I really like that was the goal like mm -hmm. that <laughs> so and it was just like it was just a really rough time for me like I hated men I still do but no my man my man is great Ooh, I'm so, <laughs> but yeah i really did hate them like it was really bad and like even though i would talk to guys i would never yeah. usually take them seriously yeah. I, would just, I would just be bored and just try to talk to them and it's just like i knew nothing was gonna come out of it like mm. it was i knew but yeah, so I guess those are like two perspectives you can see of people who have been like, you know, sexually assaulted and like yeah. the end result of it. Mm -hmm. So I just want people who are assaulters, rapists, whatever, you guys really think about what you do because it does affect people in the long run. Mm -hmm. Like how you said the five minute thing is the last mm -hmm. time for her. Mm -hmm. Like people go through this and they end up projecting that into their kids and like just, just think about what you do before you do it mm -hmm. because not only is it evil it's just i just there's no reason for you to yeah a simple can i do this it will take you a very long way so um yeah do you have anything else to say um no just you know keep fighting keep exposing mm -hmm. them grimy ass men yes keep, you know speaking up as much as any you can't it's okay don't mm -hmm. let anybody pressure you into or go to the police for some police Fuck the police. Like Honestly. The way that this world is right now is just please, let's just try to come together, you know, yeah. as survivors and you know, um I know Jumi's gonna leave some resources down mm -hmm. in the comments below to mm -hmm. be able to help people, but like, you know, um I mean she can you can also put like my social media yeah. handles down there mm -hmm. if anyone feels comfortable to wanting start. to talk to someone yeah. else who's been through it. I know yeah. that's helped me. Yeah. Um I think that's the reason why I even I think the first time I've ever been vocal about it was like probably 2018 mm -hmm. on Twitter. I said that I have been through this and like I'm open to talking to anyone who's had a struggle with opening it up to anybody about it. So yeah. like I'm always open to it whatsoever. Yeah. Same for me guys. Like my social media would be in the description box. Like I'm very, I'm here to listen to people like whatever you guys have been through. Like if you don't feel comfortable talking to friends, family, you could always, always, always talk to one of us and just understand we understand the pain you've come through. We, we've been there ourselves and just know it's going to be okay. Like God has you here for a reason. He has a purpose for you. And it's just like, I tell and, um, Angela, like if God forbid, if she was, to have been successful with her suicide attempt, like she wouldn't be here today telling you guys reaching out to how many, it's YouTube, anyone could click on this video and watch it. Mm -hmm. It's just like, she wouldn't be here today to, you know, share her story, her testimony, and like, and she's a survivor, and that's why I will always forever respect her because it's just like she's here, standing strong. <laughs> don't be gay, don't be gay. No, don't be so, <laughs> She's here, standing strong, and she's able to tell her story, and I would just always have the utmost level of respect for her and it's just like I just want you guys <laughs> I respect you so much too I just want everyone to be you know I know it's gonna take a while like to get to that level like yeah. share your story with other girls younger girls and like I just want everyone to help each other as a community and as women mm -hmm. as survivors just be able to be comfortable and talk about this because mm -hmm. it's not it's not so, people like to when you hear sexual assault they just like to be down ah. you know they don't know what that is and it's just like it needs yeah. to be talked about and I'm mm -hmm. just glad that we had a chance to make this video today to reach out to everybody and yeah so let so everyone know that you are loved you're loved you're um, valued. Yes. You matter. And you matter. Yes, you matter. Yeah. And God has you here for a reason. So I know important. it's a dark time right now, and you might be going through it right now. Or you're going through it. Too. I just know, like God really loves you. Like if you feel like nobody in this world loves you, like always remember God loves you, like yeah. forever through everything. 
he values you you're way 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 more valuable than you think no matter what has happened to you just remember that like god always loves you yeah and yeah so that's the end of the video guys thank you for tuning in today um it's been such a pleasure to come up to you guys and talk about this you know very serious and very important topic and um thank you for coming to my channel thank you for having me uh, of course anytime <laughs> we're definitely gonna come back on here and talk about something way really lighthearted and like mm -hmm. funnier and you know <laughs> something more <laughs> yeah don't worry not you. as dark so you definitely see this face again i just want to appreciate all of you guys for tuning in make sure you like comment and subscribe and i will see you in my next video bye, bye. <laughs>